Hello, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to be with you today to tell you about our next master artist, Edward Hopper. You might be wondering, why am I dressed like I'm ready to go to the beach? Well, Edward Hopper was an American artist who simply painted his love of the sea. So grab your hat, your glasses, and your beach towel, and let's get ready as we head to the coast. Here we go, artists. Using a quiet hand, go ahead and raise your hand if you enjoy going on trips away from home. I bet there are a lot of hands up in your classroom right now. Thank you, you can put your hands down now. I bet some of you like to travel by train, airplane, or car. If you go by car or train, it's fun to look out the window at all the interesting scenery. Today, we are going to travel with our master artist, Edward Hopper, as he toured around the United States painting very interesting things he saw. He and his wife love to travel by car and explore distant places. So let's go along for the ride and explore like they did. I'm wondering what kind of traveling companion we might have in Edward. Does he have a quiet or a loud personality? Well, Edward was a very quiet and lonely person throughout his life, and we can see his personality through his paintings. I also want you to notice the length of his legs in this photo. Edward was very tall. In fact, he had a nickname when he was just 12 years old. He was called Grasshopper because of his very long legs. He was over six feet tall in the sixth grade. Edward knew by the age of seven that he wanted to be an artist. He wrote the words, would be artist on his paint box so everyone would know his future plans. Since he was a quiet, shy boy, he spent a lot of time alone reading and drawing. Our other traveling companion is Edward's wife, Joe. Let's meet Joe and you'll see what she had in common with Edward. You may have guessed that Edward and Joe had art in common. They met in art school. They drew lots of attention as a couple because Joe was very short and tiny at five foot two. And Edward was a towering giant at six foot five. Joe also had a very different personality. She was bubbly, chatty, and outgoing, while Edward was very serious and quiet. They had no children and lived a very ordinary life. One of their joys was driving around the country and painting scenes of American life. Hopper used Joe as his model for all of the women in his paintings. Sometimes he changed the color of her hair or put her in different clothes. Now that we've been introduced to Edward and Joe, let's set out on our road trip. Joe is already in the car, ready to go. I think you'll enjoy our first stop. Go ahead and raise a quiet hand if you like to spend a day at the beach. I bet there are many hands raised around your classroom right now. Thank you, you can put your hands down. Sometimes it's nice to sit under an umbrella at the beach so you won't get too sunburned or too hot. Let's go ahead and look at one of Joe and Edward's favorite beaches. Edward visited this beach with his wife, Joe. They spent their honeymoon near this beach and enjoyed relaxing and painting there. Let's look at the simple way Hopper put this picture together. 
there are only three main blocks of color, the sand, the water, and the sky. We see horizontal lines in the horizon line where the water meets the sky. We also see horizontal lines where the sand meets the water. The bright colors that really catch your attention first are the orange and yellow umbrellas right here. We also see footprints in the foreground. They're in the middle of the sand. And look at where the sky is a deeper color of blue on top. I am thinking it is a cool day on this beach because it looks like the people are all dressed warmly. When you do your art activity, you'll be making a fun umbrella beach scene, just like Hopper did in this painting. I wonder if it will include a horizon line. We'll have to wait and see. This is another activity that Hopper enjoyed doing, sailing. Raise your hand with a quiet hand if you've ever been sailing or if you would like to try it someday. Great, me too. Thank you, you can put your hands down now. Edward grew up near a river in New York and had a love of all kinds of boats. As a teenager, he even built his own boat. Edward's wife, Jo, wouldn't let him sail by himself, so they had many happy days sailing together. This looks like a good day to sail because of all the wind. Notice again the simplicity of the painting and how important lines are. He used a combination of several different lines, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. Here we see vertical lines on the left side of the sails. We see vertical lines on the people going up and down. We see horizontal lines on the horizon line. We see horizontal lines in the sea going side to side. We see horizontal lines on the boat going side to side. We see diagonal lines on the sails. And we also see diagonal lines on the boat. Now, let's direct our attention to another interesting scene that we can spot from our beach chairs. Let's just turn our heads and discover, we can discover a lighthouse in the background. Time and time again, Hopper painted lonely lighthouses. Sometimes he painted the same lighthouse from different angles. He liked useful things, working buildings that showed strength and usefulness. Edward painted with realistic detail. Let's pretend we can sail right up to the shore, beach our sailboat, and hop out to explore it up close. What details can you point out about the lighthouse? Go ahead and raise your hand if you notice something about the lighthouse and your teacher will call on you. Here, we can see that the lighthouse has windows. We also see a railing that goes around the lighthouse. And there are lights towards the top. 
and on the house, it looks like there's a chimney. Great job. Here, we also see vertical, vertical lines. We see horizontal lines and we see diagonal lines. It's time we travel on now and leave the ocean for a while. Back in our car with Joe and Edward, we head inland. But there's a stop we definitely need to make before too long. Hmm, you might be thinking, why are we stopping? Oh, it's because we need gas. This is a typical gas station in the 1940s, about 80 years ago, when the hoppers were taking road trips. If I had to pick a word to describe how this painting makes me feel, it would be lonely, isolated, or even dark. Hopper sets the stage by painting a mood. It invites our imaginations to create a story about what mysterious creatures we might find as our journey continues on this lonely road through the deep dark forest in the background. Now I'm feeling like I would like to quickly get away from here. It's getting dark, so let's look for a place to spend the night. I wonder if there will be a motel nearby. I'm wondering, what do you think of this place? Would you like to spend the night here? Using only your thumb, show me a thumbs up if this is a place you would like to stay, or a thumbs down if you wouldn't want to spend the night here. Thank you, you can put your hands down now. Since it's the only place around, we will check it out from our car. Look at the sign that gives the name and details. If we went even closer, it would say, Rooms for Tourists. It is brightly lit inside, but somehow it doesn't feel as if it's friendly and inviting. Look at the importance of line here again and how he has used light and shadow for drama. I think we would prefer to find another motel down the road because of the mood that we are feeling from this painting. Well, after a good night's sleep, we're off again. He and Joe bought land and built a house on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. It was a perfect place to spend summers and to paint. So that's where we're headed now. Now this is a place I would like to spend my summers. Hopper always loved water, so they built their house on top of a hill right next to the bay. Look at the warm colors that Hopper used here to show his love of the area. He used the warm colors of orange, yellow, and brown. But he also used these contrasts. He used shadow and light and horizontal and vertical lines. Here we can feel the quiet stillness and loneliness in this painting. Next, let's take a look at a morning scene of what life was like for Edward and Joe in Cape Cod. I wonder if he will use Joe as his model. Yes, Hopper used Joe again, but he changed the color of her hair. Look at his fascination with light again. In order to place your attention on Joe, Hopper put her in an orange dress next to a blue window and placed her in the center of the large window. She looks very tense. It makes me wonder, what is she looking at? What is she thinking? Is she waiting for someone? 
Why is she holding so tightly to the table? It's like Hopper writes the first chapter in the story, and we are left to finish it. Tick tock, we are turning the clock forward to evening now, as we look at this same house in the evening. Notice how the mood has changed here. Can you give me a word to describe the mood? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. Thank you, great job. I'm wondering which painting you prefer. In your mind, think, do you prefer the painting in the morning or the painting in the evening? At the end of each summer, the hoppers sadly had to return to the city. So let's travel with them by train this time. Hop on board. We can tell how Hopper is feeling about leaving the country and returning to the city through his use of harsh colors and light, the boring walls on the train, the unattractive chairs, and the formal positions of the people on the train. We will end our travels with the Hoppers with this ocean scene and we'll have fond memories of our discoveries. Let's see if you can help me fill in the missing words as I read the sentences. We first traveled to their honeymoon spot at the beach. We then enjoyed Edward's boyhood fun by going sailing. We hopped off our sailboat to explore the tall lighthouse. We had to stop our car for gas. And then we were so tired, we found a motel or rooms for tourists. After a good night's sleep, we headed to Cape Cod and saw where they built their summer house. Hopper painted the same house twice, in the morning and the evening. Hmm, I wonder if you could choose one place to return to, where would it be? Would it be the beach, going sailing, going to the lighthouse, or going to their summer house at Cape Cod. Go ahead and raise your hand if you have a place you would like to return to, and your teacher will call on you. Great job today, artists, as we discovered the beauty of the sea and of America as we looked at the paintings of our master artist, Edward Hopper. I hope you have a great time creating your own beach scene in your upcoming art project. Have a great day, and I will see you next time, Paradise Panther artists.